Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, an exciting announcement here for you today. I'm pleased to announce the public preview of XSLT plus .NET Framework support in Azure Logic App Standard. Let's get into it. All right, so as I mentioned, we now support the ability to call .NET Framework assemblies from XSLT files inside of Azure Logic App Standard. Now, I will call out this is a public preview feature. And as a result, you know, we're going to iterate on top of this existing offering. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on this slide. Now, why is this important for customers? I think customers that are currently exploring migration scenarios, uh, this is going to be something you want to look at. So whether or not you're coming from, say, Azure Logic Apps Consumption or Azure Logic Apps Ice, and you want to move those workloads over to standard, this may have been a blocker for you previously because you've been able to use your .NET Framework in, uh, investments inside of XSLT Maps. And so now this should remove that blocker if that was one of your scenarios. I think another migration scenario that we run into a lot is BizTalk migration. So for BizTalk customers, we know that you do use a lot of .NET Framework to extend your orchestrations and, and various BizTalk artifacts. And this feature should now help you move those workloads over to Azure Logic Apps standard as well. Now, one thing that's interesting about this particular release is that we don't require an integration account. And so if you're already familiar with Azure Logic Apps standard and you've tried to use data transformations by uploading XSLT files and, and schemas, you've discovered that you don't need the integration account to go ahead and do so. But we previously didn't have a facility for you go, to go ahead and call .NET assemblies using the scripting functoid. And really that's what we're unlocking here today is you're going to be able to go ahead and do so, but you don't need the integration account in Logic App Standard. Now you might be asking, okay, great. I want to try this out. Uh, how do I go ahead and do so? So you're going to be able to do this through a feature flag. And I'm going to talk about that on the next slide, but uh, you can go into your Logic App Standard instances and turn this on. It is available worldwide at this point. As this is a public preview, our goal is always to get the bits out to our customers and partners as early as we can. And as a result, then get feedback and get that feedback before it's too late. You know, we want to co-develop with our customers and partners, get that feedback so we can include that in upcoming releases. And so this is in public preview, so we're definitely interested in feedback. And two of the areas that we're currently working on is support for extension objects and a more native portal upload experience for assemblies. And when we get into the demo, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now, before we move on to the rest of the content, I wanted to give a shout out to Praveen from the engineering team for helping me assemble this content. Okay, so how do we go ahead and enable this feature? So number one, you're gonna have to have an existing Azure Logic App instance deployed, whether that's net new or one that already exists. Then you're gonna to wanna to go into your settings and your configuration settings from the left navigation. This is where you're gonna see all of these different app settings that currently exist. Now, you probably don't have this. Um, if you do, uh, then what you would just do is add to it, separate the values using a comma, but I suspect for most of you, you won't have this specific app setting. So you're gonna go ahead and click on new application setting and then provide the name of Azure Web Jobs feature flags, and then a value of enable multi-language worker. And when you go ahead and do so, what this is going, what we're gonna do behind the scenes is we're gonna actually basically provision and instantiate a, another worker, uh, another worker process for you. And this one is going to natively understand .NET Framework. And so when this .NET Framework code runs, it actually runs within the context of this specific worker, which is pretty cool. So let's not uh, delay any further. Let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo and uh, I'll take you through this end to end. All right, so as part of the demo, let's start in BizTalk. And what we've got here is a, is a BizTalk map. Nothing too complex, but you know that's on purpose. We don't need a bunch of complexity just to demonstrate how this all works. And so we've got, you know, a, you know, basically we're going to do a data transformation. We've got here just a, a functoid that's going to like uppercase things. We've got a, another uh, functoid. In this case, it's a 
scripting functoid, and we're going to go ahead and call a compiled assembly here. So we've got uh, a method called prepend HR code. And so inside of this code, it's not overly complex either, but we're just going to prepend, you know, SP dash, and then, you know, we'll uh, append that to whatever input value is, is shared with us. Now, typically what you would do in order to get this file into Logic App Standard is you would go ahead and validate the map because you can't take the BTM file directly into Logic App Standard. We want an XSLT file. And so when we go ahead and do that, uh, basically validation, we're going to see two files that are generated. And this is particularly important. So we've got uh, the XSLT file, and then we've got the extension object XML file. So let's go ahead and let's open up the XSLT file first. Okay, here is our XSLT file that uh, was generated for us. Now, what we can see here is it you know, looks pretty standard. Uh, we do have some you know, straight mapping where we're gonna go ahead and select values from basically our, our input. And then we've got uh, a couple of things would be a little bit more advanced. So we have the call where we wanna call our method our prepend HR code method that lives inside of our compiled assembly. And so that is uh, a little bit problematic in its current form. And this is where that extension object file is gonna come into place because right now the XSLT file doesn't really know how to load the assembly that has this method in it. And so we're gonna have to give it some help. And so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that here shortly. Now, the other interesting thing is we've got this uh, string uppercase and what that functoid actually is doing is it's just embedding some inline uh, .NET code that is going to be sort of provided for us now you know this allows us you know using the same pattern where if we wanted to embed some simple C sharp code we could go ahead and do that inline inside of the XSLT and that will also run much like this specific functoid will run so that's our XSL T file. Now, one thing to note is that when BizTalk or Visual Studio generates this file, it's going to have a .xsl extension. What we do want inside of standard, Logic App Standard, is an XSLT file. So do rename it to have the XSLT uh, file extension. Now let's go ahead, let's take a look at this extension object. Okay, so here's the extension object file that was generated for us. Now, if we take a closer look at this, this is actually quite interesting for the BizTalk runtime to be able to go ahead and discover the correct assembly and then load it during runtime. So we can see that we've got a namespace here where it's script NSO0, an assembly name, contoso.hcm.helper, and then we've got a class name. And so what BizTalk will do with this file is it'll use this information to not only load the correct assembly, but then also to be able to instantiate a new instance of that object so that you can then go ahead and call it. Now, this is missing today from our, our current implementation, but this is something that we're gonna support in the near future where you will be able to provide this extension object information and then the XSLT file won't have to be modified in order to get this to work. So we do need to tweak the XSLT file, at least for now, in order for this to work. But once we have extension object support, then, then we won't have to, to do this. Now, when I say we have to tweak it, um, here's an example of the tweaks that need to take place. So this is based upon the original XSL file that BizTalk and Visual Studio generated for me. And as you can see down here, we've got that variable where we wanna go ahead and call a method and then be able to pass uh, some text into that method. So what I've done here is I have changed the name of this method call. So prepend HR code, and then I've just you know used the term local to differentiate it. And then what I can go ahead and do is provide an msxsl script element and within there, we can provide these assembly name and the namespace that we're going to call. So, you know, you can probably start to draw the linkage between the extension object file and why it's so important for us. 
because it will take care of finding the assembly, but then also instantiating. But for now, what we do have to do is we need a local method where we will then go ahead and instantiate this object ourselves. So this is a reference to the map helper, which would be the name of the class that exists um, basically in that compiled assembly. And then we've got that method of prepend HR code that we're gonna go ahead and call. So you do need to do a little bit of tweaks in order to get this to work. But like I said, you know, give this a few weeks and, and we should have the extension object support available uh, for you. Okay, so that takes care of the extension object side of things. So now let's flip over to portal and let's talk a little bit about how we can now get this set up. Um, this is supported in VS Code as you can see here as well, but there's a, a few things to discuss on the portal itself. So I'm over here in the portal. I've got my Logic App Standard instance. You can see I've set up my uh, feature flags here uh, so that we've got the enable multi-language worker. That's cool. Now, what we see on the, the left-hand side here is we've got schemas and maps. So this should be a familiar place for you. And this is where we would go ahead and want to upload the XSLT file that I was just showing you. So we can come in here, click on add, select our file, provide a name, and then hit okay. Now, this is kind of the next piece of sort of our investments are coming. You don't see any sort of assembly uh, folder here, right? So how do we go ahead and get the assembly uploaded into the Azure portal? Now, you could do this directly in VS Code if you wanna just deploy it from VS Code, but we're, we're talking about portal here for now. So what we can use is Kudu, and what we can go ahead and, and launch it from Advanced Tools, then click on Go. And then once that launches, we can go ahead and click on Debug Console CMD. And here we'll see the underlying folder structure for our Logic App. And so now what we can do is click into Site, then WW Root, and here's where we'll find our Artifacts folder and our Maps, and then we'll find our XSLT file. So what we need to do is we need to be able to upload that assembly. And so what we're going to do is we can come into here, uh, the command line prompt here, and then just go ahead and issue the following command. So we're gonna mkdir, so make directory, and then lib backslash custom backslash net 472. And so this is going to be our landing spot for our .NET Framework custom assemblies that we want to go ahead and upload. And so now what we can go ahead and do is we can just simply drag our assembly over into this experience. And we'll see that it's now been loaded here. So, hey, we don't need the GAC. We don't need to sign it. We don't need .SNK files. We're all good. We just have to go ahead and upload it. And so this is kind of the other piece of like some uh, of an upcoming investment where we want to have a more native experience, much like you have the maps and schemas upload. We want to do something similar with the assemblies itself. So now we're ready to go ahead and just build out our logic app. So we'll go ahead and quickly do that. Uh, it can be stateful or stateless. Shouldn't matter here. Just do stateful. Let's go ahead and edit it. We will choose our request. We'll just do a simple HTTP trigger. We'll do a response. And then in the middle here, we'll go ahead and find our XML transform. Now this is naturally uh, best suited as a built-in. So we can use a built-in action to perform this. Our content is just gonna come from our trigger. We're gonna provide the body. We're gonna have a source as Logic App. Um, since this is in a Logic App, like not the integration account, you don't have to use an integration account to support this. And then we can go ahead and select our map. And so this is naturally the map that we had uploaded previously. And then now we can just give the response from that specific 
uh, transformation that's, that we're going to execute here. Okay, with that saved, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the trigger value. So we'll just go ahead and copy this. Okay, we're in Postman, I've pasted the URL. I've got basically my sample input value that matches the schema. Notice the level here is, is just 24 and this is where we wanna prepend our HR code. Let's go ahead and hit send, come down and we'll see that we prepend the SP dash. So that is working as expected. Okay, so that's working, that's great. That was the portal experience. Uh, just quickly, just to show you on the VS Code side of things. So you already have, uh, when you provision a, a new Logic Apps project, the maps folder. So you'd go ahead and drop the XSLT there. You would just go ahead and create a new folder structure here, uh, basically at the same level. And so you can go ahead and just, uh, you know, whether you're in the um, file explorer, go ahead and do it, or just, you know, be able to go ahead and, and create a, uh, a new folder uh, inside of the project itself. Then go ahead, place your DLL within there, and then you would be able to go ahead and deploy uh, much like you do today. So VS Code might be a little bit simpler in some regards, but uh, regardless, either approach should work. So that concludes the video for today. Thanks for checking this out. If you have any feedback, let me know. And uh, yeah, look for updates when those other updates are available. Um, I'll be sure to um, add another video as well. And then the other thing is feel free to check out the blog post on Tech Community, which is linked in the description. Thanks and take